and welcome back to my magical man cave. My name is Neil, I'm going to be your magical host. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make something flipping awesome. It's how to make a sleeping wizard moving portrait out of pretty much any image that you would like to do. So what you could do, if you want, is to dress up as a wizard, take a photograph and make it look like you are that painting. What I did, I went to the Harry Potter studio tour in London. I took one photograph of a sleeping wizard and with a bit of Photoshop skill and a bit of animation, made this. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how I did that. It's really not that difficult, but I think the effect is pretty good. And it's going to go on a monitor in my man cave and effectively become a moving portrait. So if you want to know how to do that, please click that like button right now, subscribe and ding that bell because it's all coming up right after this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need is a photograph of a wizard. Now, I was lucky enough to go to the Harry Potter studio tour. I had planned this out in advance of exactly what I wanted to get from that tour. Obviously, I wanted to go with my son and enjoy myself, but I also wanted to take a whole load of photographs of things that I needed and things that I wanted and some inspiration for the Magical Man Cave and all of that sort of stuff. And it is coming up on this channel a bit later on, so look out for that. I just need to edit it and there's tons and tons and tons of footage. There's some really good stuff in there, really good inspiration. Hopefully, you guys are gonna really love it. But the whole idea was that I was going to take a photograph of a sleeping wizard and then I'd be able to put it into Photoshop and do some stuff with it. When I was eight, I wanted to be an animator, so I do kind of understand the principles of layering and having different elements that you can work with. So in order to get this picture into a state where I could animate it, the first thing I needed to do was to basically erase the wizard. And the way to do that is to take a cloning tool and take a sample of the background and then basically paint out the wizard so that he's completely gone. But before we do that, we have to duplicate the wizard because we're gonna add him back in a bit later on. Now, thankfully, this wizard is a fairly straightforward one, but he does have a couple of dangly bits on his hat. He's got dangly bits. I know what you're thinking. So anyway, <laughs> I figured I would do the body so that he can breathe in and out because he's human, he's alive, and he's gonna be breathing in and out. Next thing would be his head, which would be lolling back and forth. His eyes are already shut, so that does help a bit. But also his hat has those dangly bits on it. I thought I'd pick out the most prominent one and just make that sort of move very, very gently. The other thing I wanted to do was to make it over a fairly long period of time. And that way then what I could do in the animation is to duplicate the movement of him breathing. So I thought I'd animate it over about a minute, have him breathing in and out over that minute. And then that way then I can duplicate that clip and do it as a loop. But if I wanted to, I could speed it up, slow it down, make him jolt, do whatever I wanted. So the first thing I did was to wipe out the wizard, duplicate that layer, then took the body and then erased the head and the background, then took another copy and kept on doing that until I had four different layers. So there's the background, the body, the head and the dangly bit. I think I just called it dangle come the end. But anyway, once you've done that, I then put it into Adobe Premiere where I could start to keyframe certain things. So if you don't know how to keyframe, all you do is just have the clip, or in this case, four images, all of exactly the same size, which made it really easy for the alignment. And then in the effects control panel, just use that stopwatch to add keyframes. That way then you can just control how things go. Now I've got a loop deck, which does make things a little bit easier, but you can do it by hand as well. And all you do, you pick the start and the end and make sure that the stopwatch is on for whatever clip you're animating. The start and end need to be the same so that then you can loop that video clip without any kind of problem because you don't want it juddery. You want it just to be a nice even flow of breathing in and out and just doing that permanently because you don't want this thing to die. You don't want it to suddenly just sort of go 
nice and relaxed and suddenly they're in a different position than they nice and relaxed and suddenly they're in, it's that would be really weird so <laughs> i wanted it just to be a nice gradual flow in and out in and out and his head lolling back and forth so you're going to want to move the x and y positions on most things you're also going to want to move the scale a little bit on the body itself the background is going to stay completely fixed so you can just leave that exactly as it is that's an easy one for free but you're going to want the position and probably the rotation on the head to move so that it sort of lolls back and forth a bit. Once you've done that, go by keyframes just to make sure that the animation is smooth. And once you've done that, just export it as a video. Then you can loop that video, you can speed it up, slow it down. The only thing with slowing it down anymore is that you might start to see some of those keyframes, which is why animating it over that long period allows Adobe Premiere to do all of the in-between frames for you and make it quite smooth. So it's much better to have a very long video that you then compress rather than a short video that you extend. Hopefully that makes sense because otherwise it's going to be and it will look janky, look weird. So don't do that. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to do. Once you've done that, you just put it onto a media player, put it on a video and frame it all up. Now I'm gonna be doing that as I get my magical man cave, but I wanted everything digitally so that when I move, all I do is just move one single memory stick or hard drive and everything comes with me. I didn't want to have to start making stuff until I get to my magical man cave. But here's a little update for you lovely ladies and gents. My house has now been plastered and it's the final stage before decoration. So I'm hoping to be in by Christmas and they've updated the delivery timescale for my house to 17th of December, absolute latest, which means that potentially I could be in by Christmas. So I'm really excited about that. Hopefully you guys are too. Okay, that's pretty much all from me for now, but if you did like this video, please click that like button, subscribe and ding that bell, and a massive shout out to these wonderful people. They're my patrons and members from YouTube and Patreon, and they help me out so, so much. If you want to become one of these wonderful people, head on down to the link in the description where you can sign up to Real Wizardry from £1.99 per month. And again, it helps all of my channels, including this one. Um, I'm gonna be back again next time with some more magical awesomeness, but until next time, as always, Hey, Roger, go